Coming, coming. Let's get Facebook Live up. All right. Start this for the folks. All right. I'm just letting uh, Facebook get going while we're playing a little jazz here. Uh, this is Yams by Jackie McLean and her music. All right. So we are now live. All right. And uh, we'll let the family come on board here. Lots of good stuff to talk about today. All right. So, as um, we pause the tunes for now, and uh, as the fam joins, I'm going to start by. Um, I'm going to start with um, some stuff from around the gram that, um, that I've seen just this week that has been pretty interesting. So first, hello. Welcome to the Jess Shamia Show. Today is Sunday, November 15th. This is the Jess Shamia Show live community check-in. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Wow, we made it through another week and are here starting another. <sighs> what a blessing. I think it's great. Let me uh, hit that light. Bow, give me a little bit more light and sunshine on the day. All right, so uh, lots of good stuff to get into today. Uh, one uh, addition to the show um, that I'm gonna be doing from now on is um, adding, um, dear, bringing Dear Love Movement to life, um, talking about love, like let's do that. Among the other topics we're gonna talk about, people have the opportunity to um, write in your questions or topics about love, um, whether it's self-love or relationship with other that you wanna talk about. So we're gonna get into that. Um, it's never too late, you can keep those coming. Um, we'll talk about them here on the show. And um, I may respond offline to some as well. You can DM me on Instagram at Just Shamia, um, here on Facebook at Shamia Larray, um, or at Just Shamia. Um, you can email info at 
shamialaray.com, all of that. So let's keep the conversation going. And I'm so excited to get to that today. But before we get into that, um, I want to start by just sharing some interesting stuff from around the gram from this week. Things that uh, made me laugh, things that made me go, hmm, things that I said, oh, that would be good to discuss. Um, people send me things, some things I just find. Um, so I'm going to share some interesting things from around the gram that I've seen this week, things that have been uh, brought into conversation, et cetera. So I'm going to... Um, share my screen real quick and let's see some things from around the gram this week. So um, one that was amazing, of course, was this Dave Chappelle, who was on Saturday Night Live um, last Saturday and his monologue was everything. Let me see, can I click this, get a little volume? Probably not, but you know, go back and watch that if you didn't have an opportunity to. Um, completely unfiltered, no lie. That was amazing. Love that. Um, that was everything. Here's one as we get into conversations with other folk around um, what anti-Black behavior looks like. I thought that this was a really cool post by uh, the girl C at C-Dub, the host on the gram. So we're going to talk, of course, about some issues of race and racism in America because, you know, as a Black person, as Black people, this is our daily life, right? We, we deal with this. So we're going to talk about that. But I thought that this was very interesting and timely. So trying to compete with Black people, silence when Black people experience racism, inability to take direction from Black people. Um, let's add bringing up your, your one Black friend <laughs> in conversations. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different things, but I thought this was really interesting and wow, what a word. Um, I thought that this was pretty funny too when you have Grandpa Simpson talking about uh, looking like sometime in the future, looking back on 2020. He was like, I was there during the election war of 2020 <laughs> on the front lines, furiously posting memes like a son of a bitch, right? Hella funny because again, the internet's have been winning this whole campaign election season on election day and the time in the days after while we were waiting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to be officially named the winners. Um, and, and it continues. So um, the internet is still winning. So that's another one. Uh, this is one that um, I believe Sean King had posted and some others. You could go and read the Vox article. Um, lots of stuff to talk about here um, about, this is in Texas County jails, 80% of those who died. So I believe there were just over 200 inmates who had died um, of COVID-19 in Texas County jails. Um, they were never convicted of a crime. So there were a number of, of uh, those who were being held who um, had not yet been convicted of a crime, were waiting for trial. There were some who had been granted parole but were waiting for release. There's all, all kinds of just nuances here where folks just, I mean, COVID in prisons is, is a hot ass mess everywhere. And um, that's a uh, segment of the population that we're not talking about enough. And the fact that this is happening is horrible, but I thought I'd just show that, grab that and bring that to your attention. Lots more. Um, but i uh, give you one more here from uh, at a tribe called Sis says, uh, just because we have feelings for the person doesn't mean we need to, ha uh, need to actually have the person. Whoo, what a word, what a word. So those are just a couple of things from around the gram this week that I saw that I thought was interesting. Hey, Miss Marie. Hey, super sauce, I appreciate you uh, joining. Um, let's talk about it. What are your thoughts on any of the things that I've seen from around the gram, around social media? If there's things that you've seen you wanna link to in the comments, please do that. I wanna remind folks that if you want to join the conversation, you wanna talk to me, you wanna tell the people your two cents, click the Zoom link that you see in the description there and you can join me right here on camera and say your two cents. I want to hear it. Of course, you can continue to comment as well um, here on Facebook Live. So, um, yeah, lots of good stuff to get to. Um, again, the internet's be winning. Love the gram, uh, my Insta therapy. 
it has everything you need when you just log in. Okay, so now I want to uh, pivot and get into the first topic um, of the day, which is going to, of course, be racism in America. Because it's real, right? This is real life, it's every day. So I'm gonna drop a couple of links into the chat for those of you on Facebook as well. Um, so um, after last week's show, and there was some shenanigans on last week's show where the, the trolls came onto the Zoom and whatnot, but we're not worried about that. Um, I open free dialogue and opinions, even if they're not my own, bring it, you know? Uh, just, you know, we are all about spreading love and light. So that's what we're here to do. So anyway, after the show last week, someone shared um, um, a, a, an article with me about um, election outcomes in Nebraska and something that was on the ballot there. So one of the questions that I asked last week was, um, what are the things that you voted on that were important to you, meaningful to you, outcomes that you feel good about or not so good about? And also what are the things that you are looking for, you wanna see from your elected officials? So um, I got this, this, uh, this article about something that the voters in Nebraska had on their ballot um, on Tuesday, November 3rd, a couple weeks ago now. And it was uh, what they're calling Nebraska Amendment 1 which um, the ballot title was, uh, was as follows, a constitutional amendment to eliminate slavery or involuntary servitude as a punishment for crime. So a vote for this constitutional amendment would eliminate a provision in Nebraska constitution that states that slavery or involuntary servitude may be used as a punishment for conviction of a crime. A vote against this constitutional amendment would leave the language regarding slavery or involuntary servitude unchanged in the Nebraska Constitution. So this amendment uh, was affirmed, voted for, um, so the yes vote won, um, in the state of Nebraska. However, <laughs> however, uh, a third of the population voted no. A third of the population voted to keep slavery and involuntary servitude in the constitution of the state of Nebraska. Now, Nebraska is not the only state that has a um, measure like this in their state constitution that has laws like this um, on the books. Um, I believe Utah was voting on something similar um, this year. I think Colorado did in 2018 or so. Um, I think there were nine other states or so that have something similar currently in 2020 on, on the books in the law, um, where slavery, <laughs> slavery y'all, right here in America, still legal if you're convic convicted of a crime. Um, so while the voters in the state of Nebraska did um, vote ultimately to get rid of that in their constitution just two weeks ago, it, you can't ignore the fact that third of the voting population voted to keep that shit. That's whack. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. That's horrible, right? And I think um, in Utah, there was something like 20% of the voters voted to, to keep it as well, to keep slavery and, and indentured servitude in the law, um, on the books, in the state constitution. Yo, really? This is what we're doing in 2020. So this is relevant for a lot of different reasons. I, I put um, one link to ballotopedia.org in the, in the comments here where you guys can see that um, directly. Don't take my word for it, go read it for yourself. Another link to an article from omaha.com slash news so you can see that. Most Nebraskans voted to abolish slavery as uh, criminal punishment, but not all. Um, when we think about the, the high-pitched volume of racism in this country, probably magnified by the Trump administration, but Donald Trump and his administration didn't create racism. And for those who say that they fanned the flames or, you know, they made it okay for folks to be out of the closet with this and overt with racism. And I'm like, mm, 
you know, in my 41 years of black life, when, you know, Trump wasn't in office and you didn't have the MAGA hats, the shit was still happening. When Michael Brown was murdered in Ferguson, uh, Trump wasn't president. When Emmett Till was murdered, Trump wasn't president. When Dr. King was assassinated, Trump wasn't president. Certainly the things that um, he has said and is saying, um, it doesn't make it better. <laughs> it doesn't make it better. But he is a symptom of the disease. What do y'all think? Again, I want to remind folks that the Zoom link is there. If you want to uh, join me and you have comments on this, you disagree, you agree, you have more information you want to share, you have an opinion about it, click the Zoom link up there in the comments and you can join me right here and let's talk about it. So yeah, Trump, symptom of the disease. Um, and we need to quit treating the symptoms, okay? There's more on this and let's keep talking about this. So the, the issue that we're talking about right now, there's lots on the agenda today, lots of juice we're gonna get to on the show. But what we're talking about right now is race in America. We just talked about how the voters in Nebraska voted to get rid of slavery and their constitution, slavery and indentured servitude, but a third of the voters voted to keep that shit crazy. Um, also, um, because life is real and things are happening every day. I'm gonna share a link to an article. I, I could share a link to the Families GoFundMe page, but it has a very uh, gruesome photo. You guys may or may not heard, have heard about Juan Bobby Charles. He was a 15 year old boy in like Southwest Louisiana who went missing from his family home um, and the parents reported him missing. The law enforcement down uh, there didn't take him serious, didn't take them seriously, said, oh, maybe he's at a football game or some ignorant ass shit like that. Um, I, as far as I know and from what I've read, it's still not completely certain exactly which date he was found, but he was found on November 2nd or the 3rd. Um, his body was found in a sugarcane field, but the official cause of death was that he drowned. So he was killed one place and, and I guess dropped another place. Um, and um, his, his body was found. The photos are horrible. The photos show that something horrible happened to this young man. And the comparisons being drawn are to what happened to Emmett Till when he was murdered with the disfigurement of his face and everything. So you can see the images if you go on social media. If you go to the Families GoFundMe page, you can see it there. I'm choosing not to show it here, but it's not hard to find if you want to see. It's tragic. So I saw that this week. Um, and this is 2020. I see you, Cheryl, in the waiting room. I'm gonna admit you. So I'm gonna let anybody know who wants to join the Zoom. Your camera must be on in order to join. Hello, my dear, how are you? Hello. Good, good. So right now I'm talking about racism in America. Um, we started by talking about, you know, what happened in Nevada, uh, Nevada <laughs> Nebraska with the vote, uh, the Constitutional Amendment 1 to get rid of slavery and indentured servitude as a punishment for crime, but it's still on a law in, in other states in this country today. And I was just talking about the tragic murder, mm -hmm. the lynching of 15 year old Bobby Charles down in Louisiana. I haven't heard Joe Biden say anything about this or Donald Trump. I'm not expecting them to, but this right. is horrible. Had you heard about this? No, not at all. Yeah, so I put a link in the, in the comments there uh, to an article from theroot.com uh, about this for a little bit more background on this case, which is very much still ongoing. The family does have a GoFundMe because they are seeking to do an independent autopsy um, the official cause of death was drowning. But if you see this baby's face, and it, this, this hurt me so as a mother, of, uh, of a mother, as a mother of a young black boy, 
right. this baby was lynched. And there, there's information out there that says that he was picked up by some white woman and her son mm. that the family didn't know, um, whose car now smells like bleach. What I, I, We don't know what, what happened, but other than to know that this baby was murdered, was brutalized. So the family is raising money for his, his funeral services. They're raising money for an independent autopsy. Um, there's mm. lots of buck passing in this case here in terms of uh, whether it's the, the local police or, I don't know, the parish sheriffs or whomever is doing the investigation, but they didn't take it seriously. They told the parents, oh, maybe he's at a football game or something like that. No Amber Alert was issued. Um, none of that. No one took this baby seriously. Oh, okay. I see you, Ola. You, you saw the picture. Horrible picture. Horrible picture. It's gruesome. Um, it's gruesome when you see it. It, it. It's ugly, but this happened. And I'm not talking about in 1950 something. I'm not talking about in 1800 and something. I'm not talking about, you know, after the Watts riots or something like that. I'm talking about like less than two weeks ago, y'all. Less than two weeks ago. In America, right here. So my prayers go out to his family. My prayers go up to the Lord for his spirit and his soul. Um, and I want to know, like, what do you, when, when sh ish happens like this and we call for justice and we march for justice and we protest for justice, what does justice look like in a system that was not created by us or for us? I want to know, what do you think about that? What does justice look like to you? If this was your family member, your neighbor, he, I mean, does he have to be, but what does justice look like for us? Because this family did what they should have done. Their son was missing. They went to the police. Good kid, and he drowned, he couldn't even swim. And the police didn't even take them seriously. Never did what they should have done if a child comes up missing. Issue an Amber Alert. Didn't do it. For days, he was missing. And they didn't take the family seriously. Day one, didn't issue an Amber Alert. Day two, didn't issue an Amber Alert. Day three, didn't issue an Amber Alert. And this poor baby boy was found fifteen. I'm so devastated for them. I'm pissed. And a part of my roots are there. My father, that half of my family is from Louisiana. I feel it. These aren't some people over there. I think a lot of folks, not just other folks, even us, when we talk, when we think about race or we see things on TV or what, a lot of us have the mindset that it's happening over there to some people over there. It's happening in a far away. Oh, that's horrible. But it's not happening right here. It's happening right here. So I'm gonna bring a couple other things that have happened. Okay. So we have talked about Nebraska. Y'all keep dropping your, your comments in. If you wanna join the conversation on Zoom, the link is there in the description for the live on Facebook. And um, I will paste it into the comments to make it easier for some folks who, who ask like, where's the link for Zoom? Let me do that real quick. Uh, Un momento, por favor, gracias. Bow, there y'all go. That's for the Zoom if you want to get on. Okay, more things happening all the time. Um, I'm going to share a link as well to an Instagram post from uh, a sis that I know here in the Bay Area, single black mom doing her thing, professional woman, Sarah. 
Uh, she's on the gram at I, let me see, her Instagram is I, at I am Sarah Speaks on Instagram. So this sister, single mom, took herself out for lunch and a little drink to a place called uh, Luca's Bar and Grill in Benicia, California, which is here in the San Francisco Bay Area. While she's having her, her meal and the server comes over to uh, check on her or something and there's an older white couple out there, this is outdoors, you know, socially distanced and whatnot, and there um, was an older white couple sitting at a, a, another table nearby and um, the older white woman at the table threw something at her table. It didn't hit her, but it threw it at her. The server didn't do anything. The restaurant didn't do anything. They didn't escort the, the couple out. They didn't admonish them in any kind of way. None of that. She left and she recorded this video from the parking lot. They didn't comp her meal. They didn't say anything. I'm sorry. They didn't even issue an apology until she posted on Instagram, added them. When she left, that couple was still sitting there at the table, enjoying their drinks. And when things like this happen, something that we black folk always say is, now if that was me and I and my blackness had thrown something at a white person at a restaurant, police would have been called. I would have been escorted out immediately. That didn't happen. All right, let me see. Okay. So there are some people in the waiting room. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I can show you some stuff. Because um, once again, the trolls are here. And if I don't know you or if I don't see you on the Facebook, I am not going to invite you to, um, to join. But I want to just screenshot this. And let me see if I can show y'all real quick what I'm seeing. Give me a minute and let me come into Zoom. Hold on. So I wanna show you what I get, just a little bit. So I'm gonna leave this here for a few seconds so you can see. The only way that you get the Zoom meeting ID is if you come on the Facebook Live or somebody on the Facebook Live forwards this to you. So somehow in the network, connected to me and the Just Shamia Show, Shamia the Right Productions, trying to do something live and positive, I want to show y'all that this is what I'm getting trying to join my meeting. We have these cowards here who come on and they, they post these threats to me like they did last week. So I took a screenshot and I'm showing you and I did report it to Zoom and I don't have to admit them, but I want you guys to see this in real time. This is right now, as I'm right here live on Facebook with y'all. This is what I'm getting. This is what I got last week. <laughs> And more, with people threatening to rape me and behead me and do all these things, calling me all kind of N-words. I just, I just take a screenshot so you can see, because there's things that I see as the host. There's things that I can admit and let in. I could let them in and let them rant and rave and say their stuff and then remove them when, when I'm done. But I want y'all to see, this is right now. As we're sitting here and we're talking about what's happening in our community, what's happening to our people, not just somewhere else. Yes, they're fighting against SARS in Nigeria and, and all over the continent fighting against hate against black people and blackness. But right here in the San Francisco Bay Area on this Sunday, November 15, 2020, I, Shamia Larray, am fighting and experiencing racism too. So I wanted to show you all this because it crept its little way in last week, and here it is again. So I wanted to show y'all, screenshot real quick. There it is, this is what I'm getting. So let me uh, stop. So I know a lot of you heard about it after the fact. 
there's more. There's another person in here. I'll cut your head off. I will stab you to whatever. There, there, there's a lot here. This is happening right now. Hey, Ma, you in the dark, but I see you. Oh, you're connecting to audio. That's fine. But this is, this is important, you guys. It's important for us to continue having conversations about racism. It's important to, for us to call it out when we see it. Don't just let it pass. Don't dismiss it as some stuff that happens to people over there because it can happen to us here too. It's happening to us here too. Like the story I just shared with you about Sister Sarah, who went right here to Benicia to have lunch. And it's hard to just get out. It's hard as a single mom to get out and just have time to yourself. Minding her business. And this is what happened to her. Young Bobby Charles, and this is what happened to him. All right, Ma, do you have um, audio? Can you I believe say something? I do. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up? What's on your mind? Uh, it's interesting that we're talking about this. Uh, this week, I watched a video on YouTube who put the Klan in Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. Interesting little video. Um, and when I watched it, I just could see all throughout the United States history how this racism is deeply rooted in every single structural <laughs> system in this country. The Klan attitude came from some poor white Scots, the Scottish, who play these bad pipes and it's like it's a part of their culture as well as my last name is it uh an irish name irish scottish name but just thinking about all of this is going to be hard until everybody in america looks at themselves in the mirror and say to themselves what is it about the black skin that causes you not to see us as an equal human being Mm -hmm. that's that's first and foremost and then if you still look at us as free labor which is what most of the poor white scots did and still want to have free labor the prison system okay poor schools uh unkept neighborhoods uh, unhealthy neighborhoods polluted neighborhoods uh fathers away from their children neighborhoods, uh, kids taken out of their parents' arms neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. All of that, you can go back in the U.S. history and British history and French history, you know, African history as well. You know, you can go back and you can see, you can see, you, you can, you can see the hatred. And that, that's all it is. And, you know, my call out is this. For all of the people who say they are lovers of any kind of God, which God tells you to hate and harm, mm -hmm. and separate and leave behind? You know, any human being, any living thing. You know, it, 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 America has to, has to look at themselves in the mirror and yeah. just be real, be real. Let me, ask you, let me ask you this question. I just shared um, a screenshot, a screenshot of, uh, of one of the threats I've received today. I'm, I couldn't and see that. I would love okay. to see those names. Uh, that, email, that, that, email they, 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 they change their name to just threats and they, they hide behind that. But, you know, everything can be found and traced. Uh, you know, my you addresses know, and all that. But let me, let me, let me, my question is this. Yeah. How do you, as a black person, as a mom, as a, an educator, mm -hmm. um, as a member of the community, as an American citizen, how do you feel 
seeing or hearing that on this day, November, Sunday, November 15, 2020, 2 34 mm -hmm. p.m. Pacific time, that people you know are receiving direct threats and being called the all kind of N words, that young black boys are being taken from their home and lynched and mutilated that black women are going out and mothers are going out for lunch and being having things thrown at them at lunch by white people how does that make you feel uh it keeps me aware that i'm still alive in the united states of america uh it makes me feel like there's nothing that i have to say to prove who i am because I know who I am. And mm -hmm. it's like when I look at somebody who <laughs> uh, cannot show respect to another human being, um, that tells me that that person has a lot of uh, inferiority issues, period. Um, you, you know, in the United States, we, we, we put people in jail for abusing animals, okay? If you go to jail for abusing an animal, yet you do nothing when uh, a human being is murdered in broad daylight or is standing playing in the park as a child and you get shot in less than two seconds of an encounter. Mm -hmm. All of that kind of stuff, it hits you. It, it hits me as a mom, as a sister, um, as a woman, as a friend. Uh, as a cousin, you know, as a teacher, as a neighbor, as a citizen of the United States. It hits hard. It hits hard. And it lets me know that I need to be seen. I mean, I'm not hiding because I know who I am, you know. And it's like my mom, Claudia Pearl, she, she set us straight on walking out her front door. Mm -hmm. She said to, to me constantly, <laughs> um, Cheryl, um you're not better than anybody and ain't nobody better than you and i walk with that that's how i live my life yeah you know there is no no you know and I'm, as a christian too mm -hmm. you know as a christian too it, it's like god says he, he's no respecter of person so that means your status too you know and if you know who you are walk with that the yeah. ignorance it'll be dealt with Mm -hmm. You know, you you got it. You got to be seen. Yeah, you got to be seen. You know, because it's like, um, why do we have to run away and 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 be under underserved? We don't step in a gap in your commun communities and and your families and tell people. You know, turn off that BS on television and stuff. That's acting. That's entertainment. Mm -hmm. Real life is you know within your walls with the people you know out in the in the neighborhoods and communities you know strike up some some conversation hey how you doing today that yeah. kind of stuff so i'm gonna i'm gonna uh keep things going and i see that there's folks in the waiting room but again if you're not a part of the facebook live right now then i don't know who you are i don't know how you got this and i'm just taking every precaution i i can email email me so, uh, a link so I can see because I invited some people and I know do you know someone named Chelsea last name begins with a B or Ellen I don't think I think these are some some random trolls but I'm not gonna worry no. about that I have my process no, but I don't yeah so thank you I appreciate you for getting the word out um all right so I'm gonna keep going you can drop off the zoom if you want I'm gonna keep the okay. conversations going much love it's all good thank you appreciate it all right bye bye you're not going nowhere all right <laughs> um so i want you guys to know and i can and i can tell you as i'm taking screenshots and show you this things that the latest threat is uh i will burn you alive <laughs> i'm gonna lynch. what does this one say um i'm gonna lynch you nigger uh all these different things this is happening literally right now um as i'm here on Facebook Live via Zoom with the Just Shamia Show live community check-in. And right now we're talking about racism in America. 
It's real. And while I've given you guys just a few examples of a couple of things that have happened just in the last week or two, and even today, think of how many other things are happening to us on a daily basis. Isn't that something? That's something. And who do we tell? How do we talk about it? With our families, with each other? I wanna take it to the workplace. And I wonder how this shows up. You know, please keep commenting for those of you that are on Facebook Live, keep the comments coming, keep the dialogue going. It's good, we need to have this conversation. How do you, how do you um, have these experiences and then go on with regular life? And what does that look like? So let me give you an example about that. Last week, last Sunday, I was here with y'all doing the, doing the check-in community. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? What's on your mind? And the trolls came with all of all that kind of stuff. And, you know, as a Black person, I'm not brand new. I, I've been on this earth, you know, God, thank you, um, for some years now. So I've, I've experienced racism at different points throughout my life, right? Throughout my whole life, I guess you could say. And I feel like as a black person in America, we're kind of conditioned, programmed, if you will, to either ignore it, accept it as, as normal as skies being blue with clouds occasionally, um, just accept it as normal and go on about life. Even if it feels away, even if it burns or it hurts, pack it down, put it away, move on. So I had this experience last week, had my feelings about it, certainly got through the show. Um, and then I had to go to work. And when you're at work, you have to show up with a certain demeanor. You can't come to work all and stank and tired and mad and bull. You can't do that. You have to come to work, be professional, be jovial right? And so you get on the calls and then your coworkers say, oh, how are you? And most of the time when people ask that, they just want to hear, I'm fine. I'm good. And a lot of times that's what we do. Even though we may have just seen images of Bobby Charles lynched in Louisiana, we may still be reeling and waiting and praying and hoping for justice for Breonna Taylor. We may be watching the latest on the Ahmaud Arbery case and seeing how people are trying to get bail <laughs> for killing this brother. We might be dealing with all that. We may have just went to lunch and had something thrown at us. But then we come to work and we have to be professional and jovial. And I'm fine. How do y'all wear that mask? How do we wear that mask? Why do we do that? Or do you have conversations and you say, oh, I'm not all right. So I tested that this week, a couple times, a couple different meetings. People say, how you doing, Shamir? Well, professionally, I'm good. Personally, I'm like, oh, oh, can you say a little bit more about that? <sighs> yeah. Sure. Well, you know, I do this, this web series called The Just Shamia Show. And on Sunday, I did a live community check-in event on Facebook Live. And when I did, I had some trolls come on and say all these nasty, hurtful things. First person came on, did all this stuff. Here's, a, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. Um, saying all these, these crazy things, making threats against me called me all kind of N words, but you know, I'm processing, it's a lot. Oh, Shamia, I'm so sorry. 
Oh, that's horrible. Oh, oh, oh. So, where are we with da 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 Back to the business. How do y'all do that? How do we do that? How is that humanity? Why ask the question when you don't want to know the answer? Many of these companies, many companies have <laughs> diversity and inclusion offices, things like that. So we're talking about race and, and you know, inclusivity and, you know, more people of color in, in management. You know, we need one over here and two over there and we're doing this, you know, we're committed. What does that look like in everyday humanity and hum in everyday practice? I had another conversation with someone who brought something like this up in the meeting. Then had a, we had a separate call and then we got into a conversation about race and these things. And um, <laughs> two things happened there. One was the conversation about, um, you know, the the black people that that this person knows and you know that they're friends and they have dinners and so there's that and then it was so but are you okay or what can i do well so for those of you who are on comment what do you do when your white colleague tells you they have a black friend How does that make you feel? Does that make you feel like they sincerely are, are, are with it? Does it make you sincerely feel that they are not racist or that they don't have any implicit biases or that they don't have an inherent, any inherent racism or racist traits that they are unaware of, that they're completely absolved of white fragility? How does that assertion in conversations about race that they have a black friend or a black person they know that they may have gone to dinner with or even on a trip or how does that make you feel y'all does it make you say oh well shit let me let my guard down man girl what's up you want to come over for some chicken and margarita uh watermelon mojitos or like what we folks <laughs> what's your black name what your, what your auntie call you, um, Boofy? Like, really? How does that make you feel? And for my white friends and supporters and, and viewers, have you ever done that? And what was your intention? What was your intention? Because when, I, when these things have been said to me, I honestly don't feel that the person that said it to me was ill-intentioned. <laughs> I don't feel that like they were ill-intentioned. Ignorant, but not ill-intentioned. So I see a couple of y'all that say, okay, depends on where they live. I laugh, uh, not at all, I don't play that. Okay, <laughs> I see y'all, right? But this shit happens every day. And then what do we do? Because we're at work. Do we keep it professional? Do we go on being jovial? Oh, that's okay. Well, mm, mm, okay. Y'all had dinner. What did you eat? Oh, okay. <laughs> All good. <laughs> Is that what we do? And if we do that, are we part of the problem? Soft, you say you check it quickly. How do you check it quickly in a way that doesn't offend and work? Do we need to care that it offends? Do we say that that was offensive? We're still talking about racism in, in, in America. Um, a couple other examples I wanna give, and we'll keep talking about this, keep chiming in, keep the comments coming. Uh, two things, one, 
as this comes up often, and I and I do serve uh, the community um, in the education fashion, you can look me up on LinkedIn if you want to know how exactly. But um, I want to let everybody know, PSA, children can be racist too. All right, that's a fact. Children can be racist too. If you didn't know, if you thought they couldn't, let me let you know right now. Children can be racist too. They learn that racist shit from somewhere and then they manifest and put it out in the world. Children can be racist too. And for you parents who have little racist ass babies that do racist ass shit to their, their classmates or their people in the grocery store out in the community, shame on you. Shame on you if you are aware of this or you're made aware of this and your, your response is, oh I, don't, oh, I don't know where they, oh my word, pearls clenched and everything. I don't know where they couldn't have got that from. I never, oh no, he don't know. They're just a kid. They don't know. He didn't know. She didn't know. Guess what? They know because they learned that shit somewhere, probably in your household, somewhere in your universe. Somewhere in that child's universe, they learned it. And as a parent, it's your responsibility to mind what your children learn, mind it, what they learn. Now, we're not all around our children all the time. Mine ain't always around me. He goes a couple, couple, not many, couple plays around a couple people. But those couple people, hey, what y'all doing? What y'all watching? What y'all around? Who y'all also around? What y'all listening to? I'm checking for those things. I'm doing care deep character checks on anyone that my child is around because these are the formative years. So it is your responsibility. And now that we're in this distance learning scenario, some kids are back on campus, some are in distance. You getting to see in people's homes and how they do. They might be wilding on Zoom, teacher trying to teach, and kids just ah, ah, all over the place, acting themselves, right? You get to see how they really act at home. But they didn't get it from here. They didn't get it from, oh, pearls clenched. They didn't get it from, I don't know, oh, my, oh. Little children could be racist too. Fix that shit. It's your job as a parent. Even if you didn't know, even if it's not your intention, check it. It can happen. It happens every single day. Just like black people going out to lunch and getting stuff thrown at them. Black women trying to do positive things on social media and out in the atmosphere, supporting black community and they get trolled and called all kind of N words and stuff. Little black boys getting lynched. It happens. And in the instance of um, Bobby Charles, it's reported that the woman who picked him up was with her son. Can children be racist? Absolutely. If y'all didn't learn nothing else today, I hope you learned that. Spread the message. So we were talking about um, what do you do out in these circles? So in this case, we're talking about professional circles. People want to talk about race. What do you think, Shamia? What should we do, Shamia? How do you feel, Shamia? When George Floyd, Lord rest his soul, was murdered, and he became the poster child for white people trying to act like they're doing something right for black folks, and we still here and ain't got shit months later. Every company had a statement. Oh, we gonna stop posting on Facebook for a month. Oh, we gonna talk about this and have dialogue circles. Oh, 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 George Floyd. His death was tra tragic. And the fact that they were calling it the death of George Floyd, not the murder and execution of George Floyd was the first problem for me. That said, oh, hold on, before y'all come talking to me and asking for my two cents in the conversation, get your back straight. He didn't just die, he was killed. So, hey, Miss Julie, Miss Gorgeous, I miss you. <laughs> your beautiful self. So, when you're asked to get into these conversations about race, 
How do you do it? Do you just jump in when somebody asks you, oh, George Floyd died, how are you feeling? Oh, mind you, in the corporate settings that I'm around, the companies that I'm with, I mean, there hasn't been a peep <laughs> about any of the other injustices against Black people that have happened since the murder of George Floyd before or after. And there's a lot. I mean, here on the show, I didn't name several, gave you some examples. We not talk about that. You know, statements coming out about, you know, Shamia Larrae being called the N-word. And I work with lots of people. But when they're when these conversations come up and they say, okay, how do you feel? What do you think? How do you do? And do you engage? And I ask you that because, and this was a conversation I had with someone, and uh, she's a, a a white colleague of mine who who asked me some questions about race, and this was my response to her. First, I played this clip or I didn't play the clip, I, I quoted this clip of, um, of um, James Baldwin. And in this clip, James Baldwin said, I'm something like, I, I'm, I'm 60 years old and all my life, I've been told that change takes time. I gotta just keep waiting, uh, change, just a little long, change takes time. My mom was told this, my uncles was told this, my brothers told this. How much time you want? He's like, I'm, I'm 60. I don't think I'm, a, I'm not gonna live another 60 years. How much time do you need? So that's part of it. When people say that change takes time. Well, I say this, action can be taken immediately. To change a mindset, a heart or a spirit, which is infected like is the soul of America, that may take time, but the actions needed to impact immediate and daily life of people can be done instantaneously. Instant, done. You could do something right now if you wanted to. So I, I, I started in this conversation, uh, on this conversation, responding to her question was, I said, well, I saw this quote, this clip, this interview with, with James Baldwin, and he said this about, you know, I'm 60, I'm not gonna live another 60 years. And you know, y'all keep talking about, it takes time, it takes time. How much time you need? Cause I ain't got that much time left. But then I said to her, um, I really need to think critically when I'm asked these questions about the intent of the person asking me the question, about the intent of the conversation. What are the, what's the intention here? Because racism hurts. It hurts me. It hurts me all the time, every day. It hurts me to be called a nigger. It hurts me to see that someone is making threats against me. It hurts me to have to explain to my child that this happened and for me to have to reassure him that he's safe. It hurts me to hear that my sister had something thrown at her and that she's hurting. It hurts me to see that this young uh, this baby was lynched and murdered. It, it hurts me to hear these things, to see these things. So when you're asking me my thoughts, feelings, or opinions about issues of race, I got to stop and think about what your intention is here, why you're asking and what you're going to do with this, because racism to me is a wound. And I got to know if you're asking me to unwrap it so you can look at it and pick the scar, pick at it, and cause it to ooze more? Or are you trying to debreed it so it can heal, get kill away the, pick away the dead things and help it to heal? What's your intention? When you're talking about race and you're looking at like weeding out all of these issues and weeding out the hate, okay, well, let's talk about weeds then. When you're trying to have a conversation about race, are you just trying to pull the dandelion on the surface that you see? Are you really trying to get down to the root of the issue? Uncover the root. And sometimes when you're pulling weeds, and I, I've done gardening, I love gardening. Those who know me, y'all know about, about that last. Talked to y'all about that last week, me harvesting herbs and making salves and stuff. So when you're, when you're in the garden, you're pulling up weeds, some of those suckers are pretty tough. 
you can pull and all you get is the leaves and maybe that flower but the root is still in you might have to get a little auger some tool and really get down in there to get that root out but a lot of people when they garden they might just mow the lawn they don't even pull the weed they just buzz them down and let the root stay or if you're pulling weeds they might pull the flower a couple leaves but leave the roots intact to get to that root takes a little bit more work so when you're talking to me about race when you're talking to me about race, when you're asking me my thoughts, feelings, and opinions about race, what is it that you're really trying to do? Are you trying to pick flowers? Or are you trying to get to the root? Hey, Sauce. And with the fly glasses, it's that kind of day. <laughs> hey, gorgeous, can you hear me? I see you looking great whenever you're ready. <laughs> is your audio connected? I see you. Hola. Hi. All right, we'll let you work on your audio stuff and then just say something when you're ready. Um, but that's what we really need to do. When folks, all right, go ahead, get it together. When folks um, ask you about race, Black people I'm talking to you right now, when people ask you about race, racial issue, to comment, I want you to think critically. Before you respond, before you give your opinion, your thoughts, your feeling, your point of view, what's the intention? Is it to pick the scab, cause more oozing, to breathe, to breathe the wound and let it heal? Is it to pick the flower or get to the root? When your company says they have a diversity and inclusion program, is that a flower picking activity or is it a root revealing initiative? What's the point? We need to think about that and then we need to call people to task accordingly. I can respond to your question, but let me just let you know, I feel like this is a surface conversation and we're not really gonna uncover anything that's to the root, getting to the root of the issue. So I'd rather not. And to talk about this is painful for me because it's my daily life and existence. I experience racism every day. But my answer to your question is this, and that is how I recommend we respond. Think critically if you wanna engage at all. Mm, I'm good. How are you doing? I abstain. That's your right. If it's gonna be surface and flower picking, why open the wound? Yeah. Love your comments. Keep them coming. All right. It's after three. I didn't talk about racism in America forever. And we can keep talking about that. We will keep talking about that because it's real. This is our life. This is our existence. Um, I want to pivot to that from that real quick. Keep the comments coming. Um, all right. Sauce is in. While she's joining, I want to let y'all just COVID update. Over a million cases here in America. It's real. All right, are you there, gorgeousness? I am. I am finally here. Hey, supermodel <laughs> in the building, who won't give me a makeup tutorial because she's tripping. <laughs> um, you can check that makeup tutorial out on YouTube. <laughs> no, but I will after this because I did my best. But it's all right. <laughs> anyway, more more on that later. Yes. Drop a link to your makeup tutorial in the comments, please. That would be great to hear you too. Um, I was just about to pivot from talking about racism in America because, I mean, we can live there all day. It's our daily experience, and we're going to keep talking about it. But before I pivot to, uh, to, to COVID and Dear Love, did you have any other comments on, on um, racism in America? Um, well, just specifically when you were talking about the whole George Floyd um, murder, um, being an influencer at that time was very... Um, it was very hard because I had seen a lot of my white counterparts um, that had never spoken on race relations. Mm -hmm. um, I had seen a lot of companies that I had worked for, work with, um, who had never posted anything about, um, you know, they, they always stayed in the, 
in the safe black girl zone when it came to like what they posted the palatable black girl light skin hourglass figure you know kind of racially ambiguous um and then companies that came out actually saying that they didn't even have black people on their marketing teams that work for them so um and then them taking so long to respond to what happened when they have so many black influencers mm -hmm. that bring them money so being a black influencer at that time and seeing how these white people was acting <laughs> during that time really pissed me off and i was really I was really vocal about it. And um, what have they said since? I mean, because part of my point is, you know, shit happens to black people every day. On the on the show today, I've named just a few. Some yeah. things that happened to me today. We talked about, you know, sweet baby uh, Bobby Charles. I was um, lynched. We yeah. didn't hear no no companies talk about that. Nothing. I talk about Sarah Anders, who does uh, wardrobe styling in films and television, yes. and this happened to her. Yes. And and the thing is, I call it performative activism. Like why people want to do things when it's convenient for them, when it's going to make them look good. Yeah. Um, you know, they want to sit here and post this black square, which I thought was really stupid. Um, you know, they want to post this black square on social media, uh, trying to stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. Um, but if you look at the rest of their feed, you didn't see no black folks in their feed. All you seen was this one black square that they felt was in solidarity with what was going on with black people at that time and how we were feeling yeah and I'm like a black square ain't gonna help that <laughs> like what are you gonna actually they picking do? flowers they they picking flowers you know yeah, and, and they are so up capitalizing on black pain stop it y'all stop it quit allowing okay. it buying into that shit and then like when they get <laughs> out of it, they're like oh we didn't know we're so sorry yes you did know because yeah. it was it was influencers like me who were calling this mess out years ago with you guys. Yeah. Like, you know, there ain't there is no way in hell that a company like Fashion Nova should have taken two weeks to respond to the George Floyd situation when all of all everybody who promotes them is black. Mm -hmm. And even the people who aren't black are culturally appropriating black culture. You making money off black people. Mm -hmm. So these companies should not take that long to respond to stuff like this. They shouldn't. However, let me bring it back because we can't control what, what, what they do to a degree. But here's where we can control what they do by controlling our dollars, by exactly. stop following, by stop liking they shit, by refusing to buy, by working with yeah. other people, by not participating in the conversation. That's what I'm saying. We need to think critically when this stuff is being done. Are they capitalizing yeah. on black pain to keep Absolutely. you buying shit? Are they posting something capitalizing on black pain to keep you tuned in? Are they telling you sprinkling a little sugar on a sour ass situation to keep you eating that dry ass toast? Like you really need to know and think critically about what's being served. You need to yeah. think about before you're engaging in these conversations and stuff, is it flower picking? Or are we really trying to get to the root of some stuff? Because here we go and stuff is still happening. Yes. Right. These okay. Back to business as usual, but yeah, we don't keep talking about this. This is what we're here for. This is what it's all about because this is real life every single day. Yes. It's my life every single day. I, I took more screenshots. I could show y'all more of the, of the hate that I've continued to get all along here on the live show. But I'm like, you know what? I'm here trying to spread love and light, awareness, give an opportunity for expression for us. But yeah. It, it, it's still coming. I've had people say they're going to find me, lynch me, kill me, this, that, 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 that talking about your story. All of that's still happening while we're here live, y'all. I can show you more screenshots, but we're going to get to talking about love in a minute. So <laughs> that's what I want to do. Don't guess, know. And hashtag Black Women Carry. Yeah. <laughs> black <laughs> black my business. That's what, that's what, what Della Reese say, you're going to walk over, but you're going to limp back. <laughs> you don't got to know, but. Hashtag don't know suckers live here because I'm radically me and I ain't never said Hashtag stuck. that pew pew life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. But yes, you know. I want that. So um, real quick, remind y'all that COVID is real. Um, more than a million cases in America. Cases going up everywhere. Um, and if you haven't noticed, since we're not talking about elections no more, what are they talking about? They're talking about COVID cases going up again. But 
a big critical piece missing from the conversation, which was real popular around, again, the murder of George Floyd was how disproportionately Black people are being affected by COVID. Where are them stories at? Because guess what, y'all? We are still disproportionately affected and dying from this shit. So y'all need to take it serious. If I see one more post of y'all partying up in Vegas or on a boat trip or in a club with no mask on, just being stupid, I'm gonna unfollow that because you're just throwing your life away. Why take the risk for you and anybody else in that room with you? And that's how you need to think about it. I'm like, it's real. I don't think people people understand like the the reason why we are still at an incline with these cases is because we didn't do like these other countries did. These other countries locked the fuck down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like China locked down. You know, Europe locked down. Like, they weren't going nowhere. They weren't doing nothing. If they was doing something, they were getting shot. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the Philippines. He, like, Jamaica wasn't letting nobody in. Hawaii ain't letting nobody in still unless you quarantine 14 days. You know, when you get there, it's like, but we're just all willy-nilly over here. Because it, economics right matter more than house. I'd go around the corner right now, somebody having a fish fry. Yeah. <laughs> and... and and Solano County is still, we're still in a very high level. Like, mm-hmm. you know, our, our stuff ain't lifting. Our, there is no sight of our kids going back to school. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we have to wear masks around here. Like, it's, it's, it's serious. So I'm like, people are not, they're, they're just, they don't care. Yeah. They think it's, it's made up. And mm-hmm. then you got, you got Trump over here talking about, oh, I had the COVID. It's nothing. You know, I'm stronger than I was before. You know, yeah, I'm don't like, let COVID ruin your life. <laughs> really? Oh, anyway. It, so. it, it is real. And we can't look at it like this. Some things will be greater later. It is real. I mean, if you, if you don't believe in it for yourself, look at the 230,000 plus people that have died just here. There's more than a million that have died. Like, look at it like this. One in 10 who get it, die. And the majority of people who, who get it, even though they recover, they have lingering symptoms. It's changed people whole everything. And so and why why take the risk? Yeah. Why take it? It's just it's just not worth it. But that's actually a good segue. I'm gonna segue into real quick points on self-care and self-love. Because we gotta talk about that. And and I love me and my one life very much. And as my son is getting older, I'm telling him, you know, mommy, I take care of mommy. But mommy, I want this. I hear that, but I'm tired. So I'm going to go get the rest that I need so I can be for you. We have to love and take care of ourselves, including being smart, you know, and not going out with COVID. Wearing one of these bad boys when you need to, you know, come on. It's all right. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't go out. Get everything delivered. That's simple. You know, you want to see people, I want to see people too. Either socially distance outside and, you know, see each other, drive by, honk. You can sit in the car and talk for two hours. They in there, you in there. You know what I mean? There's ways to figure it out or just do it online or don't do it. You'll still be living. But the thing is, is to live. So for me this week, um, some of the things I've done for self-care this week have been um, exploring Bryson Tiller, who I've heard like a song here or there, but I'm just like, oh, this little young man, you know, anyways, I've been listening to <laughs> Bryson Tiller. You know, I was putting him on on um, Pandora, which has been very good from Spurt. Yeah, um, I did. I've been paying my nine ninety nine a month. That's my self care. The- I don't pay commercials on my Pandora. Right. My Pandora rolls. Okay? <laughs> you know, we don't need time for the advertisements. You know, just give Paying me nine ninety nine. That um, I did a scenic drive to get some good food, some uh, great food actually, with good company. My son, we went drove all the way to Sonoma for a chicken sandwich. Oh, you went to Rutherford Grill. It It was hell. No, I don't know. No, I went to lose. Oh, we'll have to compare those. No, girl, it's chicken on a biscuit, and it's hella good, and it's delicious with the honey butter and hot sauce. Everything. It's great. Um, I forgot what the other place is called, but yeah. It's yeah. just a couple of spots in Napa that they got a good chicken sandwich. Yeah, but th- that one there. So that I did that. Um, and then talking to people who make me feel good. You know, had a couple conversations that are good therapy, that make you feel girly, you know, things like yeah. that. You know, I need that. What's something you've done this week for your self-care? Um, I had sex. Whoop, 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 about that light. Yeah, it's not, don't 
do that because it's not safe, but <laughs> I hate the cards. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think that doing like being intimate with someone is it, it helps. It helps because it, intimacy is important. Um and I've also been exploring different whiskeys. I'm a whiskey gal. I'm a mm-hmm. whiskey gal. Um, so just, um, I bought a, a new bourbon last night, tried it out. Um, and like you said, like music, music is always, always the thing for me. Like I am looking forward to the verses that's going to happen this Thursday with Jeezy and um, Gucci Mane. I didn't hear about that. Yes, this Thursday. Can you tag me in something in Instagram so I don't miss it, please? Y'all know yes. I so, um, so usually when I do the verses, I have my Apple TV here. I have it on my big screen. You know, we get some drinks, you know, watch, watch my verses. So I'm glad it's back. Last season two is back of verses. Cool. I didn't know. Rena, did you know? You didn't, you didn't hear me. She, and Rena is saying, what is she saying? Try Uncle Nearest Saucy. What is that? Oh, I got to look at the comments. Okay. <laughs> and then Julie's I, asking, I always want to take recommendations. If you are if you're a bourbon gal, whiskey gal, even a scotch, I'm getting the scotches. Yes, yeah, so Arena, we need to know is Uncle Nearest the whiskey? And then Julie's asking, um, which whiskey did you love, Sauce? Oh my gosh, I gotta get the bottle. I think it's called I don't want to miss hold on, y'all. Okay, she's gonna go get the bottle and tell us what she loves. Um, y'all feel free to type in the comments. What do you do for self-care? That's part of, you know, what do you do to love yourself, self-care every day, every week, certainly. Uh, it is 1776 by James E. Pepper. Okay, I've never heard of that. Bourbon. Straight bourbon. All that. Yeah. All right, 90 and 100 proof. Okay, so she said Uncle Nearest is a whiskey is 90 and 100 proof. So there you go. It's a tippy oh, tip. Yeah. All I'm right. Because I'm always looking for new whiskeys. I've been, um, I have been loving port. I don't know if anyone knows about port uh, whiskey. Like port wine? Yeah, but, but there's the scotches and whiskeys that they've been doing as ports. Okay, I didn't know about that. Yeah, so that's for you, like, that's for... When you got a little extra change in your pocket, that's going to be an $80 bottle. All right. Okay. And but, Cousin Gerald, I see you walking the Venetia Bridge as part of your self-love, self-care. Oh, yeah. That's dope. I didn't know that was a pedestrian bridge. Like, I didn't learn yes, something today. Thank you. I did not know. Look, oh, I didn't learn good. something and you didn't spread no, it. I don't like to come to Vallejo, but the Carquinas is a pedestrian bridge as well. well. That one I did know. Thank you. Oh, just... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and she said that's a black owned whiskey producer too. She said that's a black owned whiskey whiskey producer. So we're gonna have to get that. You know, I'm gonna have yes, to face yes, and make something great. All right, so I want to pivot, y'all. So we're doing something different because we gotta save time to give shout outs for good ish at the end. But before I do, um, I'm all about love. Certainly we talked about self-love, but dear love, the collection of love letters written to love is my book. You can buy it everywhere. Um, Dear Love, the movement is alive and well. One of the ways that we're um, keeping the movement going is to talk about love, topics of love, all of that. Oh God, Thank you, Julie, know. for putting in what you're doing. Yoga, long baths, and cozy baths. Am I going right? All of that. If there's some bath and body products that you love, drop those because you know I'm that girl. Um, so you can um, DM me on any of the social media platforms. You can email me your questions or topics. Uh, for Dear Love, I will not read your name or the names of anyone that you um, may have put in your question or your letter, um, but we will do that. So um, I'm going to pivot, and there's topics and there's letters. Oh, uh, look at you. Look at you. Oh, thank you. Yes, there it is. There it is. That's right, ready. Okay, so the first letter says, um, Dear Shamia, I think it's dope that you're doing this. Thanks. Thank you, sis. All right. I've been dating someone for about eight months now, and I really like him a lot. We've been keeping it casual, but both have said we're open to a relationship. I haven't brought up the R word in a while because I don't think we're sexually compatible. 
Mm. And all this time, he's never made me come. I've tried coaching him during sex and he does try a little bit, but then he just goes, but then he just does what he knows how to do, his routine. He's a really good guy and I hate to break it off or hurt his feelings because the sex is lame. What should I do? Miss F straight it. Well, Saucy, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, sex is very important to me <laughs> in a relationship. I mean, I that that that's how I express myself. That's how I express love. That's what I like. I said I love intimacy. If if you aren't sexually compatible with someone, I mean, like, what are you gonna do with that? How do you move forward with that? Because intimacy is such a big part of being in a relationship and, you know, having longevity. I know people don't agree with that, but like, you gotta be able to connect mm -hmm. and connect. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit. So um, she said that he's a really good guy. She likes them a lot. They've been dating for some time. They've talked about relationships. And that it sounds like that he's open to coaching. So if this is someone that you really like, and, uh, and I do agree with, with uh, Sauce that sex is a very important part of a relationship. Um, and if this is someone that you are really wanting to build with, but certainly before you commit, um, you need to have a conversation. Communication is everything. And I think maybe outside of in the moment because it says that she's tried coaching during sex have conversations outside of it like over dinner or you guys are watching a movie you just pause and be like babe can i talk to you for a minute you know i um really want to enjoy sex more and this is these are some things that would really be more for me um then the other thing in terms of coaching um there's different ways of coaching there's you know explaining to a person oh put it here do this move like this um you can also try to like move and motion their body or you know just ask them to not move and you you know use their body for your pleasure there's different ways you can try to figure that out but then it can also be a little bit deeper than that because sometimes if we're not physically responding to a person there's something on a more psychological or spiritual level that's not maybe gelling with that person or there's something within us that's unresolved i've had a situation before where i was with someone for some time and at some point my my girl just went like this, like she didn't want to let him in. She was just like, nah, I'm done. Now, yeah, was I aroused that I want, but I just wouldn't let them in. And for me, that was a signal at the end of our relationship. Not because, you know, physically I wasn't attracted to it physically, we couldn't get there, but it was a hint in my intuition that something was off and was wrong and it was right. So I, my advice to you, Miss F Straight, it would be to dig a little deeper on that emotional and spiritual side to make sure that you're really in tune with this person or maybe there's a flag that this isn't the one for you. Or if you think that this is and this is someone that you wanna work with, have a conversation or conversations outside of the bedroom and then try to take control instead of um, in, when you're in the moment being physical, um, yes, you can verbally explain, but then, you know, maybe take, move their body and, you know, to do the maneuverings that work for you um, and, and see how that helps. So that's what I got for that. Uh, if y'all have any more uh, comments for that. Uh, <laughs> Gemini, you know, that's that Taurus-Gemini combination you guys want. Oh Lord Jesus! All right, <laughs> and there are some more comments. So Miss F Straight, if you're if you're listening, whoever you are, there's some more comments on Facebook here. I have some things that you should do. <laughs> some people, uh, Rita said, exit stage left. No, but there's some other things you could do. So um, yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, okay, and I think he's showing his age. Okay, so it's a question. Why do y'all sisters make it so hard to date you? Sisters are always talking about, quote, a good man is hard to find, end quote. But when a good one comes along, y'all shrug him off. If he isn't so tall, only makes so much money, has too many kids, isn't Christian, etc. It seems like a good man isn't what y'all want, but more of a Tyson Beckford looking Jesus juice drinking puppet. Sauce, care to comment? <laughs> I'll start. I'll start. You start this one because, Lord. <laughs> so I'll start. So um, I think that good men 
and good women can be difficult to find because everybody isn't for everybody. And you do have, that's the purpose of dating. The purpose of dating is to find out what you like and what you don't like um, and to see if you're compatible with the person. I think a, a lot of the problem is that men and women nowadays are not dating properly or they think that dating is being in a committed relationship with one person. I'm like, that's not what dating. So I, that, that's part of the problem. I do think specifically when it comes to black men and women, it's a whole lot deeper. So, I mean, because of time, I can just pick the flower right now, but really we got to get to the root, which is that there are a lot of systemic things in place that have broken our sense of self as black men, as black women, that have broken our sense of what family is, what marriage is, what relationship and commitment is, and the value of all of those things as black men and women. Um, and this is for generations. And so a lot of us just don't even know how to do it. And then we're, we're constantly bombarded with images of what relationships should be that are exactly what relationships shouldn't be. So I think, yes, sisters do want a good man. And I think that men want good women and we all deserve to have that love. I think good women want good women, good men want good men, whatever. I mean, I'm not I'm just doing that, but I'm addressing the question as it was written. Um, but I think that, you know, for one, it starts with really getting in tune with yourself, including what are the things within you that need some work? Um, and that person has to do the same. And you really need to date because the right one, everybody, the, whoever you've come into contact with might not be for you. And that's why you keep dating. But don't throw black women away because you've had some bad experiences. Sisters, don't throw black men away because you've had some bad experiences. And that's another thing we need to quit doing is, you know, all this dragging black men and black women and all y'all, all y'all do making them kind of ignorant ass statements because it doesn't help us. It's not helping us individually heal and it's not helping us in our relationship to one another. So that would be my thing. I think that, yeah, all of us need to be realistic with our expectations as well and be real about what we bring to the table. But it, it, so it starts with ourselves and how we're loving ourselves. And then also how you're communicating and asserting your needs and what you're looking for. And don't date something that you know is not what you're looking for. That part. Do you have anything to add, darling? <laughs> I mean, I can even come and put the reversal out there. Men also require a lot from women in general and when we don't meet that need then you know we get called difficult and it's because they're they're also looking for the woman that is so tall hourglass figure Oh, but she she can be big, but she can't be that big. Yeah. Oh, she can be big, but not big, big. She can be <laughs> dark, but not dark, dark. You know, she can, you know, she can wear a weed, but she got to have long, pretty hair. You know, it's like, it's we are confronted with those things as well as Black women. And I and I, I think that it, it just, it stems back to when we first came to this country and how we were just divided. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, uh, unfortunately, that's where the the rift between black m women and black men started you know and and even now it's like we <laughs> we feel so good when we see a black love it's like to where we turn it into a hashtag because it's so rare to see you know what i'm saying and i'm like it shouldn't mm -hmm. be like that like why can't we really have black love and it just be like normal it's not normal. I'm like, oh, I feel a whole nother sermon on that one. I'm like, well, she didn't brought up all that's so real. Mm -hmm. Normal is in it's interracial love. I see more interracial love and then the, the interracial love being in more in harmony than black love is. Mm. And I'm like, but that's programming. That's also programming where you're seeing these things as programs. So that's why I'm saying there's so many things at the root that we have to get to about this, this black man, woman relationship stuff, black family health, you know, stuff. There's so much that we have to get to at the root in, in order to really address it and understand it. We got to get to the root of that. And yeah, all this other stuff is programming. We're coming up on time. So I want to do a couple of things real quick. One, there are other um, 
questions and, and um, letters that have been submitted, please keep those coming in. DM me at just Shamia on Instagram or here on Facebook or at Shamia Laray on Facebook, or you can email me info at shamialaray.com. Um, your love questions, topics, and we'll be talking about this every week. I will keep your name and they name out of it, but we will do this. Um, so we're going to keep talking about love. But as we come to a close, I think it's very important that we give shout outs for good ish. So good stuff has happened. So I have a couple things. If y'all have some shout outs for good stuff, y'all want to drop in the comments, please do that. Sauce, if you have some shout outs for good stuff you want to do. Um, my first shout out goes to Sister Candace Elder, who's an advocate and executive director of the East Oakland Collective. She was just named to Oakland's newly formed Commission on Homelessness. So yay, sister to you. I think that's hella dope um, because she has really been in the streets and about that life and helping people boots on the ground. I know because I've seen it myself, shoulder to shoulder. So congratulations to you. Hey, hey, gorgeous baby Amazon. I love you. PT misses you. Look, getting all the superstars today. Hey. Um, also, one, so another shout out for good stuff. So there's a couple of um, music projects that dropped this week by Bay Area artists, how, hashtag Bay Area. Um, these are two artists and musicians. Like both of these brothers are not just artists, they are musicians. They play real instruments. The first is uh, Lamar Green, shout out to you. Um, his first solo project is Love Times Two. Um, so I first met him, he was uh, part of or playing with the, the band uh, We Are Denari in Oakland, and I've seen them perform different places, um, hung with them at du Dwayne Wiggins' place and everything, but he dropped his first solo project, and it's called Love Times Two. It is streaming everywhere. Let me let y'all know. Boy, the song is fire from the intro. You know how in 90s R&B, you hear an intro, you know, a song about to do something, you start getting the intro. And then when the beat dropped and the first word was, I was just like, oh, oh, I was in my feelings. I needed a date afterwards. He's like, have you ever had a lover? And I'm like, I don't think so. The way you're singing this to me. Uh, <laughs> so it's really great. So shout out to Lamar Green for Love Times 2 fire um the other brother is marcus phillips who i went to school with um marcus is a bassist he has played for everybody everywhere he's toured all over the world played with i don't know from jennifer hudson kelly clarks i mean he's played with everybody um right here in the bay <laughs> used to go see him at q's down in jack Lines where everything but i'm so proud of him so he has just launched his uh dropped his first solo project which his album, which is called Perspectives, is available streaming everywhere. Um, and it's it's a slapper. So <laughs> my favorite tracks on that, because I did listen to the whole thing, Marcus, if you hear this, if somebody let Marcus know, um, this side, that side, fire. The title track, Perspective, fire. Um, 60 Seconds Worth, that's the name of the song. I was like, oh my God, the title. So suggestive, but it's really good. Uh, 60 Seconds Worth um, is like that, let your backbone slip, stank, funk. Ugh. Like he was on that bass, like ugh. it was amazing. And then um, his song, Have I Ever, that song inspired me as an artist. I was like, oh, I need to write to this. So thank you, Marcus, for that good music. It's dope. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I remember you trying to get us together as a choir in Black Student Union at the Noah Valley Racist Ass High School, um, <laughs> getting us together singing Melodies uh, from Heaven by Kirk Franklin, and he was working with me. And, <laughs> and all, I mean, I'm so proud of you. Boy, you did that. So um, y'all, if y'all have other shout outs for good, ish that's what we need to do like big up our people that's doing great stuff out here in the world in the community um yeah sasha you have any more shout outs um shout out to you and blythe for looking fabulous on a sunday and pulling up and supporting and showing love i love you, you know, I, I knew you were gonna love you. if i did not pop in i was gonna be sex <laughs> with the threat so mm -hmm. <laughs> um but um this is um as far as size inclusive community goes there was a there is a brand called superfit hero that just did a launch this week 
um, with athleisure and fitness clothing that goes up to 7X. Okay. So this is very big. And is that what you were looking cute and perching and tooting and all that stuff? Sure. I saw you no, on the My hiker shorts populating up in Okay. <laughs> I saw <laughs> you. <laughs> um, Which are red sneakers that I love. I was like, oh, I like H to T. was looking good, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> so... I and that's big. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's big for y'all to don't know sauce that she has some sneakers on because girl is a Cali flip flop queen, slide queen. And I was like, oh, look at her with them sneakers. That's how I remembered. I was like, look at you. I had to so fly. Okay, go ahead. All ever in my life. I hate it. But, um, but yeah, th so that's, it is very big for community because there's not a lot of brands that go up to that size. So um, and then that actually show the bodies that mirror each size. So you kind of know what your body's going to look like in each, um, in each size range. So I want to give a shout out to that. Um, and as far as music, there is this guy named Duran Bernard. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of him, but he just dropped his album, his self-titled album, and it is the bomb. Okay. okay. The bomb is the bomb. So go check that out. It's oh. on our music platform. So thank you. And I'm gonna ask that, you know, even after we we wrap here today, go ahead and post links to that, to that whiskey you're talking about. The the things that we need to know that's good stuff, put it in the comments for this because you know it's forever. It's on the internet. For those of you who are gonna see this on my YouTube channel, you can come to at Shamia Larray on Facebook. And you can see all of the comments and all the stuff that you missed there and the links to stuff and the names to stuff that we were talking about. Um, Sauce, please do also include the link in the comments to your makeup tutorial because those of you who are on know that she is about that. Those of you who have seen her Instagram and the Heffa looks flawless and all the damn time and I'm mad at her. Like, well, she'll be like, let's go get some tacos. I'm like, would you dress like that? And I don't wear makeup like <laughs> Ever, it's like, like okay. Diana Ross and some shit, and I'm like. <laughs> so anyway, if you can post the link to your makeup tutorial, I'm sure there are plenty that will love to see and be able to slay as flawlessly yeah, as you yeah. always do, child. I'm like, how do you know? what kind of light she use? <laughs> I got a light, baby. <laughs> yes, yeah, no. no, I'm just like, cause, no, it's just like, no, the makeup is on point, but you are just gorgeous anyway. Anyway, okay, love session's over. I will be back next Sunday, the 22nd from 2 to 3.30, talking about all this real stuff. Here to talk to y'all about whatever you want to talk about. It's for us with the Just Shamia Show community check-in, spreading love and light, um, Dear Love the Movement, keep talking about love and things that matter to us. So tell somebody thank you for everybody who came on the facebook live who dropped in the comments who shared the posts i appreciate you we out here trying to do good stuff love y'all see y'all next week bye toodaloo toodaloo